فاشرف بي لاشتغالي بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد سورة الانفطار بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اذا السماء فطرت واذا الكواكب انتثرت واذا الجبال فجرت واذا القبور بعثرت علمت نفس ما قدمت واخرت علمت نفس ما قدمت واخرت يا ايها الانسان ما غرك بربك الكريم الذي خلقك فسواك فعدلك في اي صوره ما شاء ركبك كلا بل تكذبون بالدين وان عليكم لحافظين كراما كاتبين يعلمون ما تفعلون ان الابرار لفي نعيم وان الفجار لفي جحيم يصلونها يوم الدين وما هم عنها بغائبين وما ادراك ما يوم الدين ثم ما ادراك ما يوم الدين يوم لا تملك نفس لنفس شيئا والامر يوم اذ لله Surah Al-Infitar is a surah Makkiyah. It's one of the surahs that came down before the Hijrah to Medina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فَطَرَتْ When the sky breaks apart. We previously spoke about in Surah Al-Takweer that the Messenger alayhi salatu was salam, he said, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يَنْظُرَ إِلَى يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ That the Prophet said, any individual who wants to see the day of judgment, anyone who wants the day of judgment to be placed right in front of his eyes, and as though he's looking at the day of judgment, the Prophet said, anyone who wants to look at the day of judgment, like he can see, like the day of judgment has been put in front of him, he should recite, let, let him recite, let him recite, let him recite, we already dealt with it. We already took it. Then the Prophet said, the second one is, which is what we're in. And the third one is, which we're going to come to, inshaAllah ta'ala. So those three surahs, those three surahs, the Prophet said, anyone who wants to know the reality of the day, day of judgment should recite those three surahs. When the reciting here is being meant by what? Qira'ah, recitation, with understanding the meaning in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he started by saying, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فَطَرَتْ When the sky breaks apart, the word in فَطَرَتْ, it means إِذَا شَقَّتِ السَّمَاءُ When the sky, it rips. The sky is no longer 
intact and it's not stuck together. It breaks apart the sama. And it's like what we're going to see, see in the other surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ شَقَتْ When the sama cracks open. The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to open the sama is so that the angels can come down. Allah says in Surah Al-Furqan, Ayah 25, وَيَوْمَ تَشَقَّقُ السَّمَاءُ The day when the sama cracks open. The sama it opens. بِالْغَمَامِ وَنُزِّلَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ and the angels, clouds, and the angels, they come down. The angels, they come descending down. So the sama right now, does it have any cracks? No, it doesn't. Because Allah said in an ayah, Do you see any cracks in the sama? The answer is no, not now. But when that time Allah wants the angels to come down, the sama is no longer going to be as it is right now. It's going to break apart. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ انْتَثَرَتْ And when the stars, they fall scattering. The, the stars, like a necklace a woman is wearing. When the necklace opens, and the beads that are in there, what will happen? It will scatter if it rips open. The stars they will like that scatter all over. وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ And when the stars fall scattering. So the thing that's falling here is the nujum, the stars. The kawakib here is the stars. If you look at in Fatarat, and you also look at in Dathara, in Tatharat, sorry. Both of them you realize in the Arabic language, they are both Madiyani. They are past tense. Sah? And they are both the person who is doing it is not mentioned. The one who is doing it is not mentioned and the tense that it has come in is a past tense. But the event is taking a place when? In the past or the present or the future? Walhadatu fil mustaqbal. The event that's going to happen here is going to be in the future. The reason why Allah did it like that, there's a, there's a balagha in this which is called Dalalatu ala tahqiqu hu'i. The indication in this is that the way that when something happens in the past, everybody affirms it. And everyone says it happened. Just like something in the past will not be questioned, the same is that this is going to happen like that. It's really going to take place. That this uh, sky will break apart. Now, And also, the stars will fall scattering. It will really happen. The balagha and the eloquence that's being used is there. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, some of the mufassireen, when it came to the ayah, وَإِذَا السَّمَاءُ وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ تَثَرَتْ Some of the mufassireen, they... No, this is the ayat come after. No problem. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ And when the sea fujirat erupts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the third verse, He tells us, وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ And when the sea erupts. What will that mean when it erupts? It means that the sea, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it flood and all of the seas will come together. It will be like one. فَصَارَتْ بَحْرًا وَاحِدًا مُمْتَلِئًا It will be like one sea. All of it is full. That's the view pushed by Abdullah ibn Abbas and Qatada and also Al-Hasan, Al-Basri, rahimahullah. They all said that that's what's going to happen. Al-Imam Al-Hasan Al-Basri also added another information in there which is what's also going to happen is that that water will, it will erupt and we already mentioned it before, that the water, Allah will burn it. And so what will happen to the water? It will go into condensation, right? And so no longer will there be water. That's what he said. But that's not taken directly from the usage of the word, fujirat. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ And when the sea erupts, 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْتِرَتْ And when the contents and those inside the graves are also brought out and they also scatter on the earth. وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ And when the content in the grave, I mean, those who are inside the grave, they come out and they also scatter on the earth. Because now the hour has come. And every individual will be brought out of their graves. And every individual is going to go to the Arab al Mahshar, the place where they're going to be accounted for their deeds. This ayah is telling us about the reality of everybody and the reality of the things around us that's going to happen. And if you look at it today, the relationship between the people of the grave. And the people who are living on this earth has to be strong. In, 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 in other words, this is a place that we have to consistently go and visit. Look at it today. If you look at the grave today, you see sukun. Sukun means what? Tranquility. You find tranquility. When you look at it from the top, like Ibn Sammak, he said, لا يغرنك. Don't let it deceive you that it's calm from the top. For verily what's happening beneath is different. One person has hufratun min hufari nar. One person is a pit, the pit of the hellfire for him. And another person, it is what? Riyad is a garden, Riyad al Jannah. It's a garden from the gardens of Jannah for them. Well, the Prophet وسلم, he used to say to the companions, as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud narrated, and Ibn Majah narrated in his Sunan, that the Prophet used to say, Kuntu nahaytukum. I used to, I prohibited you before. Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarati al quburi fazuruha. I used to prohibit you from visiting the graves. Now go and visit the graves. Fa innaha for verily visiting the graves to zahidu fi dunya. It will draw your attention away from the dunya. Wa tu dakkiru al akhira and it will remind you of the hereafter. In the beginning of Islam, the companions were told not to go and visit the graves. Does anyone know why they were told not to go and visit the graves? Because they were new to Islam and any means to shirk was being closed off. So Islam was telling them, you can't go visit the graves. Because when people go to the graves, they worship those who are in the graves. So they are told they are not allowed to go and visit the graves. Early stage of Islam. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? Kuntu, I was one who used to stop you and forbid you from visiting the grave. For verily I now command you to go and visit the grave. Why? فَإِنَّهَا تُزَهِّدُ فِي dunya, Because the grave and going and looking at it and seeing it, it draws your attention away from the dunya. تُزَهِّدُ فِي dunya. And it will also remind you of the hereafter. So now, what's the wisdom of going to the graves? This is what the Sharia's wisdom is. The purpose of going to the grave is not to ask those who are in the grave. That's all. This is what the Prophet told us. The Prophet told us that the person and why the purpose in why a person would go to the grave is so that they can what? It can draw them away from the dunya, and it can also remind them of what? The hereafter. Another hadith, Abdullah ibn Burayda, he narrated from his father Burayda, and now can fi majlisi fihi Rasulullah. Burayda was in a gathering where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was sitting. Faqala, the Prophet said, Inni kuntu, I was one who prohibited you from visiting the graves. Inni kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarati al quburi. Faman arada an yazura fal yazur. I used to, I used to, um, I, I forbid you from visiting the graves before. I now command you to go and visit the graves. Whoever from amongst you wants to go and visit the grave, فليزر, go and visit it. وَلَا تَقُولُوا هُجْرًا وَلَا تَقُولُوا And do not say anything that is, that is not suitable. When you go visit, do not say that which is, is not suitable. So connecting yourself with the qubur and the graves by going there and all seeing this is going to be your place 
This is going to be your real home that you're going to live in. It's not the, the house that you have in London. Your real home that you need to decorate with righteous deeds. Decorate it with righteous deeds is that grave. So you go inside it, you check it out, you get the dust, you look at it. This is what's going to be poured over you. وَلِذَلِكَ The Prophet sallallahu a hadith which Al-Imam Al-Dhahabi weakened for three reasons. First of all, because Ya'qub is in the chain of narration, he's wahin. And also, Yahya ibn Sa'id Al-Ansari, he never met Abu Muslim Al-Khawlani. And the third reason is that some of the narrations show that it is not Abu Muslim Al-Khawlani, somebody else, who's called Abu Muslim, which is Majhul. Ala kulli hal, Al-Imam Al-Hakim narrated this in his Mustadrak, and he said, Rijaluhu thiqat, that the Prophet said, Zuri al qubura go and visit the graves. Tudakkiru biha al-akhirah, the graves will remind you of the hereafter. Waghsil al and wash the dead. Go and wash the dead. Sometimes go out of your way, and if you know that there's a masjid that takes part in washing bodies, say, I want to wash it. Fa'inaha mu'alajati jasadi khawin. Because when you turn over that body, a person who once was walking on this earth, when they wanted something, they would pick it up themselves. When they wanted to sit, they would sit. When they wanted to stand, they would stand. When they wanted to do something, they would do it themselves. Is no longer able to even move their own body parts. They need somebody to turn their body parts over for them. My Sheikh, Dr. Ahmed Imam, who graduated from Jamiat Umm al Qura, I was with him in Somalia, I visited him. He was teaching me Kitab Jasharh al Tirmidhi. He told me a story that sometimes the Qalb can become so hard and so dark and it can become so tainted that even the dead body doesn't affect you anymore. He said there's a grave in Mecca known as uh, the Qabr, which is known as Mu'alla. It's a big grave. He said there are many great bodies that are brought to the, those who wash the body. body. Many bodies are brought. So Mecca, you, if you pray so every salah, there's a, a janazah, right? After every salah, there's a janazah. So many bodies were brought to these people. So it reached the point they become numb. Okay? And what they do is the body will be brought and the person is dead. They push in the stomach. They put their soup inside there, they take their bread and they dip it and they're eating while they're washing the other body. They wash the other body and they are eating their bread and their food and their meat. The stomach of this person has become a plate for them. They're eating from it. And they're washing it because their hearts have become, has become like that. So the reality is Al-Imam Sulaiman Ismail ibn Yahya al-Muzani Yahya ibn Ismail al-Muzani The student of Al-Imam al-Shafi'i he, he took on himself The role of washing bodies In his later stages in his life He just became a person who washed bodies The reason why he did that is because Going and washing dead bodies It what reminds you what As the Prophet narrated to, attributed to him this hadith it's a great reminder for you in doing that. Pray on the dead. When you hear of a janazah, pray on those people. Because this might bring to you sadness. It may make you scared and worried. For verily, the one who is sad and has sorrow in him, Sadness, he's going to gain the shade of Allah the day of judgment. So brothers, many of us don't do this. We don't do this characteristics, which is if we're not going to visit the graves, at least to read about the umur matters pertaining to the hereafter. وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ And when the contents, I mean the people who are inside the graves are scattered, they are brought out. The qabr is going to spit them all out. People are going to come out of their qubur. That is what's meant by bu'thirat. There's another qira'a, another way that it's read, which is... Does anyone know? 
فزد قراء يا إخوة هاي بلال يا there's another قراءة that is read as بوحثت بوحثت بحاء is a قراءة attributed to عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه وإذا القبور بعثرت علمت نفس ما قدمت وأخرت every every soul will then know what it has put forth and what it has kept back. Everybody from amongst us is that day going to know and is going to find out everybody will know the good that they've done. Whatever you put forward, you will know. And you will also know what you kept back. Now the question is, we do understand what is meant by what you put forth, you're going to know. Any deeds that you put forward, you're going to get, get it. And what you kept back, what does that mean? Some of the scholars, they said it means, there's three views, first of all, regarding that. There's three aqwal. They all agree that what is put forward and what is put, what is put forth and what is put back is righteous deeds. But how does it work? In what way is it righteous deeds? The first one is, any righteous deeds that you've done, you put forth, you're going to gain it. And any evil that you've called others to, and misguidance that you've called others to, is what you've put back the day of judgment that evil will still be going on for you. You've left it back, you've died, but it's still going to be brought to you. That's why Allah said in the Quran, يَحْمِلُونَ أَوْزَارَهُمْ كَامِلَةً يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَمِنْ أَوْزَارِ الَّذِينَ يُضِلُّونَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ That they are going to take all of the evil that they've done and all of the misguidance that they've done, you're going to take your own evil, of course. And you're also going to take every individual you misguided and you took them away from the straight path and you've tr thrown them into misguidance, you're going to take their what? You're going to take their sins. And of course, they're going to have their sins. But you're also going to take that sin. Because you're the one who misguided them. And that is the view Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, rahimahullah, he chose from the three views. And the word, alimat nafsu ma qaddamat wa akharat, is the jawab of all of the previous questions. Because the ayahs from, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ shaqat it says, when the sky. And then, وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ it says, and when? وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ And when? وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ And when? All of them is when, when. The answer to that when is عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَرَتْ That's the jawab of the word, the idha that is mentioned in those previous verses. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِنسَانُ أَوْ مَانْكَيْنَ مَا غَرَّكَ بِرَبِّكَ الْكَرِيمِ O oh mankind, what has deceived you concerning your Lord, the generous one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Anywhere you find in the Qur'an the word insan, it is mentioned in the context of them. Anywhere in the Qur'an. But if it's the surah in the Qur'an which are Makki surahs, if the surahs are Meccan surahs, the word An-Nasu means the Kuffar. Whenever you see the word An-Nasu, um, Al-Insan, sorry, Al-Insan, Al-Insan, not Nas, Al-Insan. Everywhere the word Al-Insan is in the Quran, is rebuking. But in the Meccan surahs, the word Al-Insan, it means what? يُطلق على الكافر في الغالب The majority of the times. And that's the view Shawkani rahimahullah pushes in his Fathul Qadir. Ya ayyuhal insan, O you who dis, oh disbeliever, ma gharraka what deceived you bi rabbika al kareem? What is it that deceived you regarding your generous Lord? Why are you deceived by him? Here the question is, 
Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use the word Al-Kareem? Why the name Al-Kareem? From all of Allah's names, why did he specifically choose to say, Ya ayyuha al-insanu ma gharraka bi rabbika rahim Why did he say that? Why did he say the word Kareem? Because the one who has come with generosity and is generous to his creation, is it befitting for the one who's been nice to you, he's been good to you, he's been generous to you, for you to what? For you to be in a state of deception towards him? No. He's generous to you, he's greatly generous to you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's favoured you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's given you a long life to live. Opportunities after after opportunities. Allah can grab you every time you do a sin. He can grab you and destroy you. But He's, left, he, he's allowed you to live. أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرُ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ Have we not given you a life of long span of a life? Have we not given it to you? No, the answer is yes. He gave you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, a very long time to live. So now that he's done that for you, is it befitting for you to, fi- to be in a state of deception regarding him, subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is it that deceives us regarding Allah? That we get deceived by Allah? The scholars, they mention five views. The first one is, shaytan is what deceives us. Shaitan is what deceives us. That's what Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ Do not let the deceiver deceive you regarding your Lord. He, he deceives us in Surah Al-Fatir. The second thing is, that view which is that, the, the, the first view that I just mentioned right now, that Shaitan is the one that deceives us, is a view attributed to that view is attributed to Umar ibn al-Khattab. Uh, sorry, sorry. Qatada ibn Da'amat al-Sadusi. It's attributed to Qatada. The second view, it says what deceives us is your jahl, your ignorance. Your ignorance of Allah and your lack of knowledge of who He is is what deceived you. And your dim-wittedness is what made you deceived. Because you think to yourself that since he hasn't destroyed me right now, ignorance is what was taken. So the second one is, and this view is attributed to Umar ibn al-Khattab, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, al-Rabi ibn Khuthaymin. It's attributed to them. The third view is, the thing that deceives us is, وَسَتُرُ the fact Allah is hidden from us. And since we can't see him, that hiddenness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and us not seeing him, it deceives us. It fools us. وَلِذَلِكَ فُضَيْلِ بْنُ عِيَاضٍ رضي الله عنه رحمه الله He said, it was said to him, لَوْ أَقَامَكَ اللَّهُ If Allah was to stand you يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The day of judgment بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ In front of him. If Fudayl Fudayl said, sorry. So it was said to Fudayl, if Allah was to stand you in front of him, meaning make you stand in front of him, and he said to you, مَا غَرَّكَ بِرَبِّكَ الْكَرِيمِ If it was said that to you, what deceived you concerning your Lord, the generous one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, مَاذَا كُنْتَ تَقُولُ لَهُ What would you say to him? Oh Fudayl. قَالَ كُنْتُ أَقُولُ He said, Fudayl said, I would say, غرني what deceived me is سطورك المرخات your thin veil between us is what tricked me so this is what deceives us as people the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what we can't see ولذلك, do you not see the atheist they say since we can't see him we don't believe him huh? I remember one of the, the heads of atheism right now Richard Dawkins. They said to him, what would you do if God spoke? Spoke from the Sama'a. Spoke it to you. He said, Richard, I exist. What would you do? They, they said this to him. He, he, he said, I don't know what to do. He's confused. Do you remember what he said? Huh? Kalam. To even show you that 
he wouldn't even take it if Allah spoke to him. So when you discuss with atheists, the first question that you should ask them is, what would it take for you to believe? What would it take for you to what? To believe God's existence. Huh? Even if God talks to you, you're not going to still take it. What do you want me to do? Adihi, this is deception. The fourth is, what deceives is, Afullahi, Allah's forgiveness. When Allah forgives you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you, it deceives you. Gharrahu Afullahi, Allah's forgiveness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that Allah is very forgiven. And now you see many people say, it's between me and Allah. When they say that it's between me and Allah, what do they mean by that? He's Ghafur Rahim, right? Have you not heard it? Allah is very merciful. Sah? So this is, it deceives a lot of people. The fifth one is, Gharrahu Karamul Kareem. Allah's generosity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's generosity. So these are things that when people see, they get deceived. They read a hadith that speak about Allah's mercy and Allah's kindness and Allah's generosity and Allah's forgiveness. And they get deceived by that. So all of those aqwal are realities of different types of people. Ya ayyuhal insanu, O mankind, what has deceived you regarding your Lord? Concerning your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alladhi the one, your Lord. Khalaqa ka, he created you. فَسَوَّاكَ and he proportioned you فَعَدَلَكَ and he balanced you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one أَوْجَدَكَ مِنَ الْعَدَمِ he brought you out of when you out of nothing you didn't exist he brought you out of it subhanahu wa ta'ala and then what did he do فَجَعَلَكَ he had made you سَوِيًّا proportion your eyes they're in the right they look they're lying together one eye is not here and the other one is not there one ear is not heavier than the other. He proportioned you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, no discrepancy in you. He gave you all of that. He gave you two hands. He didn't give you one. He gave you two. He gave you two legs. He gave you two eyes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to close one eye and look at something. You can't see anything from what's happening all over here. But he gave you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the reality is al muasaratu hirman when you have something you don't really, a lot of the times you don't understand the value of it. A lot of the times you don't understand the value of something until you what? You lose it. That's why the Arabs they say, uh, Health is a crown on the head of what? Every healthy person. لا يراه no one else can see it except the sick one. Illness allows you to see health. When you lose a body part, you realize the value of what you had. The night when it's pitch black, dark, you start to realize the value of what? The moon. The moon is missed now. Al Mu'asaratu Hirman. When you have somebody with you, you don't realize it. The wife doesn't realize the value of the husband when he's there. But when he dies, she starts to see everything he was holding down. Sah? Vice versa. Vice versa. The guy, the husband sees the same with regards to his wife. He realizes everything she was holding together for him. Al-mu'asaratu hirman. These things are what we will take for granted. And we won't realize the value of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So Allah is saying this to you. الَّذِي خَلَقَكَ He created you فَسَوَّاكَ And He proportioned you فَعَدَلَكَ And He balanced you سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى He did all of that for you. Why are you going to be deceived? These are favors He's done for you. Wallahi, the beauty that you have today, it, it was a gift Allah gave to you سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى Why would you use what He gave you to disobey Him? That's wrong. فِي أَيِّ صُورَةٍ In whatever form مَا شَاءَ ركبك. In whatever form he willed, has he assembled you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah made you in whichever form he wanted, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mufassirin, they have three qawl regarding this. Ahlul ilm, the people of knowledge, they have three views regarding this. The first view is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he assembled you 
as he wished, subhanahu wa ta'ala. From amongst you, there's a tall one. From amongst you, there's a short one. From amongst you, there's a handsome looking one. From amongst you, there's one who's not. From amongst you, there's a smart one. From amongst you, there's one who is dim-witted. From amongst you, there is one who's skinny. From amongst you, there's one who's chubby. All of that is what he has made, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He assembled his creation as he wished. And no one has the rights to ask him why he made something the way he made it. فَعَالُوا لِمَا يُرِيدُ there's some people, some men who want chubby wives, they have it. Some men, women who like chubby men, she has it. Some everything. Once skinny, you hear her. Slim here, athletic here. Everything he made, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Short. The woman is short. She doesn't want a tall husband here, here. There's a short one here. <laughs> The woman is excessively tall. She's not forced to have to go for every... The whole men in the world are not short. She's got one that's high and tall like her. Everything he made it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi ayyi suratin, that's the first view. Ma sha'a rakabak. The second one is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able ala khalqika to create fi suratin qareebin laka. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has the ability and the strength to make you resemble somebody in your appearance, like your uncle or your cousin or your friend, uh, not your friend, um, your uncle, your cousin, your, 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 um, your mother, your father, to look like these. Allah is the one who made this happen. He's able to do that. He done that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also able to, and was able, and is able, if he wanted to, to change that form of yours and make it the most, change it and dis, dis, deform you from what you look like right now by making you into a dog or a monkey or a pig. And this is something he will do, subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wa salam, وَلَيَنزِلَنَّ أَقْوَامٌ إِلَىٰ جَنْبِ عَلَمٍ يَرُوحُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِسَارِحَةٍ لَهُمْ That a group of people will be listening to music. Ah, a group of people will be listening to music. And as they're listening to music and they're enjoying themselves, and they are what? They are enjoying themselves listening to music. A group of people will come and walk by them and they will ask him for money. Say, give us food or something to eat. And they will say to them, غدًا, Come back to us tomorrow. Allah will, he will deform. So they're partying, they're clubbing, huh? they're listening to music. These people come, they ask them for something. They say to them, come back to us tomorrow and we'll give you guys what you want. When they leave, Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will deform them. And they, because the, the, and the narration mentions they are on top of a mountain. So what does Allah do? What part of them, He makes them into qirada and khanazir, pigs and monkeys. And another group, Allah takes the mountain and He places it on their head. He crushes them on the mountain. What were they listening to? They were listening to music. So Allah, we know that this ummah, there's going to happen a khasfun that a group of people will be deformed Allah will take them from the looks if you today look at rappers and the way they jump around and they make noises like animals nah? before their faces and their looks some of them are even called dogs his name is called Snoop Dogg Dog. And if you look at them, Wallahi Salaha, I remember Khuna uh, Guled one time he showed me a video of one of them. He's jumping on the table and he's making noise. And they're watching him and they, they're going to take him for, they want to give him a record. Uh, yeah? Sah? They're going to give him a record. They're going to choose him if he's a good. He will, jumps on the table, barks, makes noise. He jumps, he takes off his clothes while he's running around. They're watching him. And they've got paper, they check him if he's good. And then they're going to give him a record. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hadith of the Prophet is, is, taking, is taking place in front of us. <coughs> so this is also, it's meant by fi ayyi suratin ma sha'a rakabak. Kalla Allah then says, Kalla bal tukadibuna biddin. Allah says to them, no. The matter is not as you guys claim. Bal tukadibuna, you deny and you disbelieve 
in the fact that there's going to be the day where you're going to recompense. You're going to be accounted. Yawmul jaza'i. The day where you're going to be held account for everything you said and done. This is Allah addressing the disbelievers. Because they're the ones who don't believe in the day of judgment. And they don't want to affirm it. And the reason why they don't want to affirm the day of judgment is because they know they have not put anything forward for it. They've not worked for it. If you look at the ayah here, Allah says, بَلْ تُكَذِّبُونَ بِالْدِّينِ تُكَذِّبُونَ this, very verse, this verb here that's been used, تُكَذِّبُونَ is what type of verb? It's a fi'l. It's a fi'l mubari'. And one of the ma'ani in the fi'l mubari'. It shows that التجديد والاستمرار that is consistency and it keeps coming back and it happens again and again. So Allah is saying to them بَلْ تُكَذِّبُونَ You disbelieve and this is something that keeps coming back from them. The disbelieving of the Day of Judgment. Allah then says وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ And indeed appointed over you and placed over you is عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ Angels who are observing you and they are documenting over every single thing which you do. Let's ponder on the verse. Allah says, وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ There are three mu'akidat in this verse. Three emphases that Allah puts, puts on this verse. First one is inna. Inna is from, a, is from the words that in the Arabic language it shows ta'kid, emphasis. Verily, indeed. Also, there's another ta'kid in there. Lahafidin. That lam is lamu ta'kid. Emphasis. Which is again indeed. English translation will lose all of that. The third one is al jumla al ismiya. The the noun the noun sentence that's in there, which is in wa inna alaykum lahafidin, alaykum lahafidin. That whole jumla it shows a ta'kid. So there are three emphases on the verse that it's telling you. That verily every single action that you do is going to be documented, it's going to be written. It's going to, going to, be, it's going to be written. Why is this? Why is it mentioned? What's the reason of it being mentioned here? The reason why it's being mentioned is to emphasize to you to be very shy. Be shy, my beloved brothers and sisters. Because there are angels that are having to write what you're doing, what you're saying. Are you going to make those angels write those foul language that you're saying? Are you going to make those angels write that filthy speech that comes out of your mouth? Be shy of fulfilling haram and doing that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited. And these angels are what? Kiraman katibin. They are honorable. These angels are kiram. They are noble. Katibina, they are recording your speech and your action. Would you do that in front of an honorable person in your community? My beloved brothers and sisters, would you do this sin that you're doing now and the crimes that you're committing now? Will you do that in front of a noble person from amongst your community? You wouldn't. But these angels who are kiram, they are noble. You would do it in front of them. وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ And indeed, عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ Allah appointed over each and every one of us angels. The scholars, they said that these angels, they don't just write the haram and the bad that we do and the good. No. They even write the fudul kalam The speeches which are not halal it's not bad and it's not good. It's the nonsense speech that has, it's still going to be written as well. Because of the statement of Allah, ma yalfidhu min qawlin, that there is not a speech that you say, anything you say. Ma yalfidhu means, a kullu ma tulfidhu. Yalfidhu bihi insan. Everything that the person utters is going to be written for them. Whether it's good or bad or even in between. وَلِذَلِكَ the Musalaf, many of them, many of them, they used to say that we would not talk. A word would not come out of our mouth unless we thought about it 70 times. We'd ask ourselves 70 questions. Is it the right thing to do? 
Should we say this? Should we not? They would ask themselves. Because I've said this to you brothers before. When the speech is in you and you haven't said it, you can control everything. You've got control over the situation. But once that speech comes out, the speech has control over you. If it was bad, you have to write an apology, you have to come down, do this, and stand up and shake everybody's hand and hug and I don't even mean like that. The whole situation is out of your hand now. Just because of a sentence or a speech that you said. So the wise one is the one who watches what they say and what they speak. Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala and the actions that you do. وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ And indeed appointed over you all are keepers, angels that are keeping everything which you are, which you, what you're doing. Kiraman, these angels are no, oh, no, noble. They are noble. Katibina, and they are recording. Ya'lamuna, they know. Ma taf'aluna, whatever you do. They know everything which you're doing. The reason why Allah mentions these angels to be noble is so that you don't do the sin in front of them. Are we all together? The second reason why Allah mentions that these angels are noble is that when they write regarding your affairs, they are not going to write unjustly. They are not going to scribble bits and bobs inside your scrolls and your paper. They are going to write it as it is. مِنْ غَيْرِ زِيَادَةٍ وَلَا نقصان. They are not going to add anything on there that's not being done by you and they're not going to take away from it. They're going to write everything as it is, as it is these angels. يَعْلَمُونَ They know مَا تَفْعَلُونَ Whatever you do and everything that you are doing. Why do they know it? Because they're looking at you. They are observing you. They are observing you and they're looking at you. Allah then says subhanahu wa ta'ala إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ Indeed, the righteous people will be in pleasure. Abrar is الَّذِينَ اتَّصَفُوا بِكَثْرَةِ الطَّاعَاتِ Abrar is anyone who, the, his description, he's described to be a person who's ex- high in his ibadah, in his obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This individual, لَفِي نَعِيمٍ They're going to be in the pleasure of their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّ الْفُجَّارَ The transgressors, the wrongdoers, the wicked ones are going to be in the hellfire. وَإِنَّ الْفُجَّارَ Fujar are the wicked ones. They are the criminals, the wrongdoers. They will be in the hellfire. لَفِي جَحِيمٍ يَصْلَوْنَهَا They will enter to burn within it on the day of, day of, day of judgment. يَصْلَوْنَهَا يَوْمَ الدِّينَ That day, they will enter the hellfire. يَدْخُلُونَهَا They will enter it. فَتُحْرِقَهُمْ The hellfire will burn them. بِحَرِّهَا with its heat. The hellfire will burn them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَا هُمْ And they are not. And never will they be. عَنْهَا بِغَائِبِينَ they will never be absent from the hellfire. وَمَا هُمْ The hum here is a dhamirun aidun ila jahim. It goes back to the jahim that was mentioned. وَمَا هُمْ أَيْ عَنِ الْجَحِيمِ They are not ones who will be absent from the hellfire even a split second. Every split, every minute, every second they will be spending in the hellfire. The disbelievers. أَيْ خَالِدُونَ فِيهَا هُمْ خَالِدُونَ فِيهَا أَبَدَ الْآبَدْ they will stay in the hellfire for eternal. They will never come out. As Allah said in the ayah, وَمَا هُمْ بِخَارِجِينَ مِنَ النَّارِ وَمَا هُمْ The disbelievers are not ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take them out of the hellfire. He won't do that subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will stay in there forever. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ Ma yawmuddin, and what can you make? I mean, what do you know about the reality of the day of judgment? Thumma, and what do you know? Ma adaraka ma yawmuddin. What do you know about the reality of the day of judgment? Allah subhanahu wa taala here He asks us whether we know the reality of the day of judgment. And the reason why Allah is asking us as a question. Is because 
when somebody is asked a question, they focus more, so they're more willing to hear what is being said because they know they have to respond. It's not a statement. When you know that a question is being put to you, an answer is needed from you. So the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he asks here is because the people will pay attention. This is a sunnah of the Quran and the path that the Quran took. And it's also how the Prophet وسلم, did it. In the famous hadith of what? The famous hadith of Jibreel. When Jibreel came down to the Prophet وسلم, إذ طلع علينا رجل شديد بياط الثياب شديد سواد الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرفه منا أحد حتى جلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأسند ركبتي إلى ركبتي ووضع كفيه على فخذي وقال يا محمد أخبرني عن الإسلام so he asked the prophet about what Islam so Jibril had to he came down he, and he's asking the prophet the companions are listening question and answer what we would now call an interview. It's one of the tariqah that the Quran already said long time ago. That two people being interviewed, one person interviewing the other person, this person answering, and the people are watching and they're learning from that. This is a tariqah, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Jibreel dealt with done. So when you ask people questions and you let them answer, is when you get their attention more. So Allah asks subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He repeats the question again. The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He stay in that, is because the reality of the day of judgment is something beyond our comprehension. It's something our minds cannot comprehend. What do you know about the day of judgment? And what is it that you know about the Day of Judgment? The Mufassirin, they say it means أَيُّ شَيْءٍ تَعْلَمُ عَنْ يَوْمِ الْجَزَاءِ What knowledge do you have pertaining to the Day of Judgment? ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمُ الْعَظِيمُ For verily, that is the day which is great. Ali ibn Abi Talha, he said that Abdullah ibn Abbas said يَوْمُ الدِّينِ is a ismun min asma'i يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَوْمُ الدِّينِ is a name from the names of the Day of Judgment. عَظَّمَهُ الله. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glorified it and venerated it. وَحَذَّرَهُ 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 عِبَادَهُ And Allah warned His servants and His slaves from it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says, يَوْمَ the day. لا تملك نفس It is the day when a soul will not possess for another soul لنفس شيئا A thing والأمر And the matter And the command Of that day Is entirely in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is saying to us subhanahu wa ta'ala Two things Number one is that That day No one can help anyone no one can do anything for anyone. No one can. Not an individual can benefit another person that day. The second concept that's in the ayah is وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلَّهِ The command and the affairs, all of it is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a day when لا يستطيع أن ينفع أحد من البشر غيره. It's the day when a individual is not able to help another human being. فبطل كل ملك. Every king, every leader, every prime minister, Muslim or kafir, has no strength that day. Has no قوة. He has no power that day. He can't benefit his people. He can't do anything for them. All of the matter has been brought back to Allah's hands subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of it is in his hands. In another ayah in Surah Ghafir, Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Who is the one who possesses kingdom? Who is the malik? Who is the true king? 
لمن الملك اليوم لله الواحد القهار today the true king the lasting king is allah سبحانه وتعالى دا ايه لمن الملك اليوم لله الواحد القهار the mufassirin they say that this is بلا التفسيرات القرانيه الصريحه it is from the verses in the quran which is direct when it comes to tafsir al-Qur'an bil Qur'an. Because the question that's asked, Liman al mulku al-yawm, who is the king of this day? Straight away, it has been answered by the other part of the verse. Lillahi al-wahidi, Lillahi al-wahidi al-qahar. This is the best form of tafsir al-Qur'ani bil Qur'an, which is salih directly. It's called what? the direct form of the Qur'an explaining itself. Also in another ayah, Allah says, الرحمن, that the kingdom, mulk, today is for Ar-Rahman. Truly is his. No one else. That's why when we pray in the salah, we say, Maliki, Maliki yawmiddin. Why do we restrict Maliki to the day of judgment? Is Allah not the king of this world? The reason is because in the dunya some claim, claim it. And they argue based on it. But that day, no one can. No one can claim it. No one can say, I'm it, it's my day. No one can benefit. No one. So the reality is, since no one can benefit anyone, no, no one can do nobody something, it's then upon each and every one of us that we take serious our own righteous deeds and that we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything we say and do. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect or mistakes or shortcomings that came from me whilst I was commenting on the verses is from me as shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.